We finally have an ICX AM4 motherboard. This one is Gigabyte's version, and this is the AB350N-Wi-Fi. Let's take a look. So as you'd expect with an ITX board, there are a fairly reduced number of features on this one. You do have a full X16 PCIe slot. It's also a reinforced slot, which is quite nice. At the top, you have four SATA ports all upright next to the 24 pin. You also have your USB 3.0 header, no 3.1 or Gen 1, uh, Gen 2 kind of headers here. And also your uh, you know st standard front panel connectors. You only have two four pin fan headers on this board, one behind the uh, of Wi-Fi side of things and the other down by the PCIe slot. Now you do actually have two RGB LED headers uh, on the board. You actually have them both just at either side of the PCIe slot. One of them is for the Wraith Spire cooler uh, LED, so that's the, the four pin one, but they also have a five pin which is RGBW header as well which is also quite cool. Of course you have two RAM dims on the board as well as obviously the AM4 socket in the middle. It does come pre-attached with the standard AM4 mounting hardware including a back plate and the sort of uh, clasped bits and of course depending on what cooler you have you will either need this or not. You will also notice a vertical M.2 slot which is housing the Wi-Fi card, the AC Wi-Fi which is pretty nice obviously does come with antennas in the box as well which you do need to attach to the back of the board and on the actual back of the board you will also find another M.2 slot which can support up to 2280 drives so something like a Samsung 960 Pro will fit in there just fine. You do also have an 8 pin power connector next to the VRMs and those VRMs do actually get pretty hot. In fact, even just at stock clocks with a 1600X, they're a bit too hot to touch uh, entirely, both idle and under load. I would mention though that there was no throttling at all, even when I overclocked it, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I am pretty impressed with the board. I just recommend that you get as much airflow to those VRMs as you can. Taking a look at the back of the board for the rear IO, you'll find a PS2 combo port, two USB 2 ports, as well as the two Wi Fi uh, antenna connections. You'll also find DisplayPort and HDMI two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. You also find gigabit ethernet and a rather nice 7.1 audio setup. So that is also pretty awesome. Just to mention on the audio system, this is actually powered by a Realtek ALC 1220 codec. This tiny little chip here is what you'll find on most motherboards, but of course they, they don't have space to put the big packaging on top that's normally labeled Supreme Effects or whatever else. So it is quite cool to see that. I would make a note that right next to that ALC chip is the clear your CMOS jumper, so if you are overclocking or doing anything with the BIOS that requires you to reset all of your settings, the jumper is the second one in right next to the front panel header for the audio. That's kind of the tour of the board, let's take a look at the software. Now the BIOS itself is fairly standard to what Gigabyte normally does. It's decent enough, although it's not the nicest of the bunch, although there's a decent number of options there available for you in terms of uh, both overclocking and in terms of the general setup for your system. Now when it comes to overclocking, this is where it actually gets pretty impressive. I'm using using a Ryzen 5 1600X for my testing here and 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz RAM. And I was actually pretty impressed that I could clock the uh, 1600X to 3.9 gigahertz at, I think it was uh, in the end, a stable voltage of 1.375 volts uh, with the 3933 RAM setup as well. So that was actually pretty impressive. I was very happy with that result. And overall, this is actually a pretty decent board. Now I did mention that the VRMs do get very hot, especially considering the actual uh, size of the heatsink there, although the reported temperature wasn't more than 60 to 70 degrees, so nothing too dangerous. So what's the verdict on the board then? Well, I'm really happy to see a nice overclockable M.2 supported full length PCIe slot version of an AM4 motherboard in an ITX form factor. This is fantastic. The actual board itself does a really good job. I would recommend getting as much airflow onto it as you can, but of course this is a small form factor board meant for small form factor systems. So if you can pick up one of those ITX 1070s or something like that, uh, then I think this would be a pretty killer board with uh, you know a 1600 or even a 1700. So when it comes to scoring for me, this is going to be a 4.5 for value for money. I think it has to be a 5 for performance, but I'm going to go with a 4.5 for functionality. I'm going to go with a 5 for styling because I think even though they've got not you know not much space to work with, they've done a pretty good job. And in terms of touch and score, I think it's going to be a 4.5, uh, but still I think it has to be a top tier award. I'm really impressed with this motherboard's feature sets, with its I.O., uh, the overall size and what they've crammed into it. I think the only real thing that I would like to see improved is just the BIOS UI, making it a little bit easier to work on uh, and perhaps a few more options available. But otherwise, it is really impressive. The overclocking was fantastic. It supported the memory at uh, 2933 out of the box. 
Um, I would mention that unless you're going to try and update the BIOS through the Windows utility, which is the only way I could do it, there was a bit of an issue with that, which I'd like to see fixed in a future BIOS as well. But otherwise, again, a really fantastic motherboard and well worth your money. So if you want to know any more about the board and check out the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the links in the description down below. I've also left a general Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate link down there. So if you could use those, that'd be fantastic. It genuinely does help me out when I'm making these videos and I, I, you know, I'm able to pay the rent. So if you do that, that would be fantastic. I've also got a few other supporting links and a Bitcoin wallet address if you fancy it. And of course, you can feel free to check out some of the other videos over here as well. There's a subscribe button over here too, as well as obviously down below. And if you have any questions about the board, let me know in the comments too. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and you know, found it useful and informative. And otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.